Hallelujah and welcome to our podcast, Diary of a Celestial Youth. My name is Okwemi Adinola and my co-host here is... Uh, Sister Ayo. Ayo. Hi, my name is Sister Ayo. Welcome Ayo. Um, so this is the first segment to our two-part um, topic on identity. And before we get straight into things, let's introduce uh, the rest of our cast. Starting from my left, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Brother Timmy. My name is Rabbi Temi Akinyemi. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for blessing us with your time and rightfully so. Uh, so we've got a very into- uh, important topic today uh, that we'd like to talk to you about, which is identity. And to start the, the, you know, the, the floor off, I think the question that I want to really know your answers to is how do you define identity? You know, what does identity mean to you? You know, tell me. What does identity mean to you? Um, identity, it's a combination of things, really. Um, I think it, for me personally, it's, you know, the morals and the things you stand for, um, the way you act, um, how you're perceived by people, your beliefs um, deep within you. Um, feel like there could be more, but those are the words that are coming to my mind right now um, that make up your identity. I feel like it's a very complex topic. Um, that a lot of people probably struggle with. Mm, um, so I feel like it's good for us to speak about this. Not that any of us are experts, but you never know the one or two pieces you can grab from different people that can help you, you know, um, forge your own yeah. Yeah. opinion and act on that. Um, but yeah, those are my beliefs on identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Mentioned. That's interesting. Timmy, what do you, you know, what do you think identity means? Because you're, you're a bit younger than the rest of us here. And it will be interesting to get your views on how you've developed your identity over the years and essentially what you know what is it that you have felt has impacted or influenced your identity the most well you see as i'm still growing identity i can't say i've reached the identity that i want mm. but when you know you're going over the years like throughout high school i wouldn't say i've got the same identity as i did in high school yeah, yeah. because going through high school is a celestial youth yeah in high school i used to think to myself oh do I go to church just because, you know, I'm forced to go to church because of my parents. But it was up to when I moved out is when I realized I don't go to church because I'm forced. I go to church because that's that's part of me because mm-hmm. I want I want to go to church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I'd say that's part of my identity. But, but to say what is what is identity, like Temi said, it's it's a complex thing. Mm. It's like a rabbit hole. You'll just you'll keep going. Keep deeper, diving, yeah. Deeper and deeper. Yeah. So it's it's whatever you, it's like, I'd say personal preference. Like, whatever you think identity is, someone else might think it's something else. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, in terms of identity, um, <laughs> the Oxford Dictionary, let's see what the Oxford Dictionary defines identity as. I think it said something about, like, the fact of being. Yes. So identity is the fact of being, of who a person is yeah. or what a thing is. So when we're talking about the fact of being, it's when you look at that thing, you identify, like you look at this table now, a table is a table. There are characteristics that make a table a table. It's got four um, legs. Sometimes a table can have two legs. Do you know what I mean? It could be square, it could be round, but is it still a table? It's a table. It, it, it performs the functions of a table, regardless of the way, you know, the table looks like. Yeah. So when, when we speak about identity, I think it's a question I'm gonna throw out. Um, what characteristics would you like attribute to yourself? So when you look at yourself or when, when you think about what other people see of you, what are the key things or what are the few things that they'll point out and say, okay, that's Temi, you know, what do other people look at you as and, and ide- to identify you as basically? And what do you identify as within yourself? Um, okay, so yeah. going ahead with that question, I think the first thing for me, um, people that look at me and associate me with one thing, I think the the most common answer would be, um, oh yeah, that's Temi that sings. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very big part of my identity. Um, I feel like different people then that have met me at different stages of life um, would, you know, know me for different things sort of thing. So a lot of people, I think the majority would know me as Temi that sings. Mm -hmm. Maybe people that I met in university, that's Temi from university. Mm -hmm. Um, People that I met through sport, that's Temi that plays football. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like there's loads of different parts um, that can make up my identity. Um, but I think the main thing um, would definitely be um, 
And for me, that I feel like if I didn't have this, I don't think I would be the person who I am today. Mm. Yeah. I think it's definitely singing and, and music. And, mm. you know, I feel like the way that's helped me navigate through life mm. um, has forged me to be like the person I am today and like made me comfortable in like the morals I have and comfortable in the person I am. Sort yeah. Of mm. See, that's, um, that's very interesting because from what Timmy said, he said ident his identity has changed over time. Yeah. Right. And the, the person he knew himself to be when he was younger, growing up, still being dictated to whether or not to go to church or go to school, whatever the case is, right, is not the person he is now. He's, He's becoming more of a man and, you know, yeah. uh, we all go through the same journey. But what's actually very interesting is a Bible passage that Ayo um, oh, yeah. showed me when we were discussing this topic. Like, it was quite interesting to me. And I thought it was necessary for us to bring it up in the podcast and actually get everyone's view on it. Ayo, if you don't mind yeah, so reading out. <laughs> it was just yeah, during the week when we were, we were talking, it was something that popped, it, popped up in my head. So it's Jeremiah 1.5, um, and it reads, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you was born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So obviously this is God speaking to Jeremiah. So it's the key bit of before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed you as a prophet. So number one, God is saying to Jeremiah, before your mother even knew you, before you entered into this world, yeah. um, and before you were influenced by so society, yeah. before you were influenced by um, morals, um, friends, um, family, culture, before all of those things came in, I knew you. And not only did I know you, um, I also set you apart for a purpose. So he's already assigned an identity to Jeremiah before he came into this world. And that identity is a prophet. So you will not only be a prophet, but you'll be a prophet to the nations. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like that's very, very, it, it's very, very strong because all the things that we will probably discuss today in terms of the things that make us us, you know, Temi has said singing. Singing is a very, very big part of, you know, his identity. Do we ever take a step back and think we're created by God, but are we living in the identity that God has made for mm, us? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Is that you being a singer, you know, have you explored down that side and think, okay, yeah. is this the identity yeah. that God has created for me? Most definitely. Like I think that's a that's a th th I think that's a really good question because I feel like God that God destines what our, our identity is before we're born, just like the passage says. But mm. I feel like as we grow, we grow or we maneuver our way through life to fight to try and find out what that identity is mm -hmm. that God has mm -hmm. done for us. Yeah. So, you know, we all embark on different journeys and I feel like that's why identity is probably a changing topic, like mm -hmm. Timmy said, through life, because the different journeys you take, I feel like all the roads connect together to yeah. lead you to the end goal. So for me, one thing that I'm or what's made me certain that at this point that singing is a massive part or just music in general is a massive part of my identity is because every situation I've had in life where I've needed to like, that I've reached a crossroads or something, music has always been there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'll give an example. I started off in school um, and I remember it started off as little as we'd be in like computer rooms, ICT mm. lessons or whatever. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, put headphones in. You can do work whilst you're um, listening to music. Yeah. And obviously, now, some research will say that's counterproductive. Like, you know, if you're listening to music, how you, if you're concentrating on that, how are you meant to be doing yeah, work? Yeah, exactly. I'll keep focus on and, But obviously, for a lot of people, too. for a lot of people, it works. Yeah. So um, I remember I would always uh, put in my headphones, listen to music, and I'd be listening to all the same songs that other people would listen to. Mm -hmm. This is more moving on to, like, as well, my identity as a Christian, too. Yeah. And I found I found that I could never do work. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I said, because I didn't want to be judged as well, identity, I, I was, I guess, back in the day, I went to a predominantly white school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as well, you know, not people already don't really have an understanding of celestial, but in that type of environment, the understanding of celestial is going to be even, even, like, less. less. Like yeah. It's yeah. going to be a lot more reduced. Yeah. So... I would be embarrassed to listen to the music that I actually loved, which was celestial music, like mm. Yoruba gospel music. But it got to a stage where I, I realised I can't do any work if yeah. I'm not listening to this type of music. This yeah. is what puts my mind at ease. So I just thought, I don't care what people say. I'm going to yeah. put this on YouTube. I'm going to listen to it in my headphones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, where I'm going with this is, okay, cool. That was stage one. I then reached a stage towards my latter um, stages of um, doing my GCSEs and exams. 
I remember specifically it was French and obviously foreign language, you know, we need to learn how to speak, how to write, etc. And I was struggling to take in the information and remember mm. it. Yeah. What helped me get through it was I turned it into a song. As soon as I turned it into yeah. a song, bang. That was it. The song was always going to come back to my head and then I would just be in my head singing and as I'm singing, I'm just writing down yeah. or I'm just saying what I need to say. Um, so you felt like it was God's plan for you to have music mm -hmm. as part of your identity. Yeah, yeah. Like it, would, it would open up doors for me. Do you know what yes. I'm saying? Like at, at different stages of yeah. my life. Um, and then, you know, going on from there, like the reason why, um, okay, after school, like moving on, like the reason why I've been to like, other places around the world now, for mm. instance, or traveled the world is because of music. Mm. Yeah. It's because of the gift that I have that's, yeah. you know, it's taken me um, to like different countries, mm. etc., to go and sing, do you get? So there's different, there's been different stages of my life um, where the, the thing that draws or the thing tying everything together um, back to the center is is singing, yeah. music, yeah. like my yeah. identity yeah. and that. So I feel like I've now definitely got to a stage where I know this, even if it's not, okay, I could easily say, now nah, I'm going to take music as a career and whatever, mm. which, you know, I, not really, I don't really, let's say, have plans to, you know, be a musician or whatever. Yeah. But it doesn't mean to say that this thing that I have won't open doors for me in whatever direction I'm going to go. Yeah. Mm. This is still yeah. a massive mm. part of my identity. This will always allow me to, or this is what will make me the person I am in whatever capacity that will be, yeah. if mm -hmm. I'm making sense. Yeah. Like, this was what will um, give me the capacity to, go off and if I decided to, I wanted to be a, a software engineer, if I decided I wanted to be a banker, if I wanted to be this, this is something that would help me get there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. So what I take away from that the most is actually validation of identity. Because you were building your identity mm -hmm. over the years yeah. and something kept feeling right. It was almost like when Samuel was being called by God, it felt like you're calling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So as we go through different um, stages of our lives and we're building our identity and becoming who we believe we should be and that God has said that we should be. I'll pose this question to you, Ayo. What were the validating steps that you felt like I've got to this point and it doesn't feel like a struggle to be this person anymore or to do this thing anymore and therefore this is part of my identity. What are those kind of things that s seem to sit right with you? Because I know you've, you spoke about this off camera in, uh, in person many times before. Um, but what were the things that you felt were connected to your identity that just felt like God has given me this? Because you said once before, I, I, I remind you, okay. um, you said about your personality being, being very jovial. Yeah. I've no, you know, there's very, not very many people that I've met that has your personality and just your, your vibe and yeah. that good vibe. And you said your mom would say, if you, she was asked, that God has given you that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is p part of your personality. It's your trait, it's who you are. If I heard someone, I'd be like, yeah, that's Ayo. Mm -hmm. Because I, it literally identifies who you are. So what are other things that you felt in life has helped you build the identity that you've That I've got have? now. Yeah. Um, one thing I know that I won't be able to say right now mm. is the way Temi was able to say music. Mm. That's it. Mm. I think I'm still like going through a phase of okay, this particular thing is like the main anchor mm. to my identity. I know that God is the main anchor to my identity at the moment because um, in the way that I am, I know for as long as I've remembered, I've always been like, I don't, like you said, jovial. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I don't. It's being jovial and identity. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't. It's, I don't it's actually know. Part of who I you are, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, my personality definitely is a major part of who I am. Um, from when I was in primary school up until secondary school, up until college, if you go around and ask all my teachers, "Do you know Ruth?" They'll <laughs> say, "Oh, do you know Ayo?" Yeah, I know Ayo. What do you know Ayo for? Oh. She talks a lot. <laughs> Aya talks a lot. Yes. She talks a lot. But in my talking a lot is I'm a very expressive person, not only with like my words, but um, just being expressive in every way that I can possibly find to be expressive. So in school, I did a lot of like performing arts things. Um, out of all my friends, I was like the only person that would like stay after school to like do things like musicals, just anything that like creates like an expressive outlet for me. I always took part in that because I knew that 
if I didn't have an opportunity or an avenue to express myself, I wouldn't be myself. Yeah. So I found my comfortable space from a very young age, a space where I could be Ayo, yeah. I could be as loud as I want to be. Yeah. I could talk as much as I want to be. I can sing as much as I want to be. I can act as much as I want to be. Yeah. I found an area that allowed me to, 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 to be expressive. And I, like my confidence was one thing. Out of everybody around me, um, I think I've, I've been the most confident since day one. Mm. I've never I've never been shy. Yeah. And it was just and I don't know why that is. Like I'm not shy to do anything. If you call me and say, Oh, I'll come and do this, even if it's something I've never done before, you'll find me that I'll go and do it. I will I I don't know, I'll just go and do it. Yeah. So in terms of that, it's helped me a lot. And for me to get to a stage, I think I there wasn't I was always comfortable from a very young age because I was able to find an outlet. So I was comfortable in, in, in who I am. Even though a lot of people would be like, oh, I was to this, I was to that. For other people, it's too much. But for me, it's just right. Yeah. Because I, if, I'm not, if I'm not the way I am, then I'm pretending yeah, I to agree. be somebody else. I agree, else. because that's who you are. That's who, um, you know, that's your personality. That's what's natural to you. You don't yeah. need to be I don't need to. Yeah. anyhow. Um, and, and, and just off that as well, though, you know, taking it back to the passage, I think something that also stood out to me is um, because, like I said, we're all on different paths. For, for many years, I've been um, away from Sile mm -hmm. and I've only recently returned. So I have so much to learn um, from other people's experience. So my question that I'll throw out, and I'd, I'd love to me to give his um, opinion first, if our path an identity of who we will be is predetermined, <clears throat> mm. what freedom do we have to become who we want to be? So for some of us that are not as close to God, right, who possibly don't have a spiritual alignment that possibly makes it easier for us to find who we're supposed to be, mm. what freedom, how much freedom do we have to be who we think we should be? Mm. Because we go through the world, you know, if, if, you, if you're thinking about it, we, we go through the world wanting to be one person, but God has already dictated to us, you will be this, this person, person, this great person, but we're still finding our parts. But what freedom, how much freedom do we actually have to make our own choices then? You see, that comes, in my opinion, that comes down to the type of person you are, like how disciplined you are. Mm. Because like you said, if you know, that God's got this path for you, but you don't really want that path. Mm. Like say God said, oh, your your path is to go be an engineer, but really and truly you don't want to be an engineer. You want to mm. you want to go do something else. Mm. Yeah. You'll notice that along the line, you'll carry on trying to do something else. Yeah. You'll get to a certain point in in say that subject or that field, mm. but then it's it's not gonna work for you. Mm. Then you'll start again somewhere else, saying, okay, let me try this instead. Mm. But really and truly, instead of you to just go straight into that path of engineering and make it there and carry yeah. on carry on succeeding there yeah you you're gonna keep looking at other things you'll keep looking to do other things because that's not what you want to do but yeah. it's what god has planned for you to do yeah do you yeah know what I, mean? I understand what you yeah. mean i think i have, I have something to contribute to that i think that question is a very deep question mm -hmm. and i feel like it originally i think to to, to or to, un to answer that question i think you you need to have an understanding of God gives us free will. Mm. And in that free will, we can do whatever we like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's at the end of the day, is you can do whatever you like and live with those consequences. Uh, when, you know, when the day comes and we're held ac accountable or you can, you know, follow the instructions that God's given to us. Now, in that free will, in terms of choosing our, our, our own identity, we can choose our own identity and get to a certain point in life where we feel like, yeah, we've done it. But mm. you can be or you, you, you would be at that point in life and it wouldn't be where God has placed you. Mm. Yes. And because of that, because God has not placed you there, the total effect that you're supposed to have on the world and on the people around yeah. you of your identity, you wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Mm. And it's a very complex thing because it's like you could feel within yourself, oh yeah, I've made it, I'm successful and all of this. But the things we want, are very different to the things God wants for us. Yeah. And I think as a Christian, it's, and this is where I feel like a lot of Christians are even having this battle is, 
how do we then submit to the core of what God wants What's for us? Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Because once you then, you know, begin to have those sort of conversations with us, it's about like, it's, 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 it, it, or it then becomes a case of you praying to be aligned with God's will. will. And becoming comf- and, uh, and becoming comfortable yeah. with whatever God's will is for your life, um, and I feel like a lot of people, you know, struggle with that. Um, I feel like a lot of people want to do the things they want, and then say, "Oh yeah, God, come and do it for me." Yeah. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. And that's the thing—you can do that and be successful in it, and you can, you know, doors can open. But you'll find one way or another, even when you then, des- or if if you then decide to enter the calling God has made for you, like the way you'll be able to navigate through it. Mm will be like it'll be seamless. seamless do you get what i'm saying it'll, yeah. be, it'll, yeah. it'll be different um and i think it's very important um or oh, sorry i think another issue that a lot of christians struggle with is okay you may be willing to want to do what god has planned for you but you just don't know what it is because mm-hmm. you know you don't know god's voice yes. do you get what i'm saying i mm-hmm. think that's a very another big issue like i you know god i want to i want to live my life for you this is that but i genuinely i don't know what it is you want me to do. Yeah. And then you'll feel like you're embarking on a journey, making your own choices, um, not knowing they're possibly choices that God's given you to make, but then yeah. you think it's your own, then you, and then it's just a, a massive state of confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. It's cliche advice to say, oh yeah, um, you know, speak to God, blah, blah, blah. It's easier said than done. Um, but I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I, I feel like everything in total would probably reside in the word of God, and it's yeah. how you then take that in, mm. um, look at your own life, you know, like yeah. look at the things you've you've struggled with, look at where God wakes ways for you or makes ways for you, and just fully letting go, being yeah. like submissive and just saying, okay, this is all in I just, your hands. Yeah, I just want to add because what what Temi said is really like it's really really important, especially in this journey, if because we've already established now that identity whether we like it or not, identity is already pre predetermined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what he said about knowing what God has, um, knowing the plans of God in your life. You know, a lot of people struggle in that area of not knowing the plans of God in their life mm. um, for, for many, many reasons. But I think the main reason um, would be, number one, their relationship with God. And even if there is a relationship with God, number two, they don't know how God is communicating to them. So they're not able to hear clearly what it is that they're supposed to, you know, supposed to do. Okay. We know identity is a lot, a whole bunch of things. I'm going to use myself as an example now in terms of professional life. Okay. So, um, uni, uni, my journey, like throughout university, I started off doing a psychology degree. I started off um, on a psychology degree. Mm. My psychology degree was a bit, I uh, wishy washy. <laughs> it wasn't, it really, it really, really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, and then I ended up not it doing it. It wasn't doing it, nine, nine grand a year. It wasn't, it, it's not even, it wasn't given, yes, it that nine grand a year. That, it wasn't given nine grand It was year. not given that nine grand a year at all. In my heart, in my soul, I was determined that I had this psychology, I want to do it. I want to know how the, you know, how, how the mind works. Mm. I want to know how the brain works. Like, educationally or intellectually, I had the capacity to complete that degree, yeah. But after three months of being in that degree, I said, I can't lie. Mm. <laughs> this this really isn't for me. Yeah. And that would probably be the first time that I quit um, in, in in something that I was doing educationally. Everything I've been able to see it through. Okay. So I stopped doing that. And then for a year, um, I was contemplating, okay, what am I gonna go back? Like, what am I gonna go into and do? Mm. So I went for a year. Um, went with my dad and I was like, okay, all right. I'm, I'm. The whole law thing was a bit natural. It came, it came natural. Being able to relate to people, just like advocate for people in a way, came natural to me. Mm. So I thought, okay, let me go and do law. First year of uni. One thing I noticed about my my uni life, my degree life, right, was at every year, first year, second year, third year, especially around exam seasons. I will always have a dream. Yeah. If in my first year I'm not having a dream of what is going to come up on that exam paper, I'm having a dream of what the outcome of my results will be. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's between God and man. That's not a lie. Yeah. If a day before the exam I'm not being shown the exam paper, or I'm not being pushed to revise on certain topics, I know at the end of it what you know the the result will be. Now let's skip to my third year. The, uh, my third year, oh, COVID and all of that stuff happened. Ugh. The f- 
in, in the January of my third year, um, after the first set of exams that we did, I had a dream that, um, so God was showing me that on paper, on overall paper, my certification would say a first, a mm. first class degree. Yeah. But then when I open, when I open that paper and actually look at the scores that I get, it's not going to reflect a first. But overall, Sha, I will graduate with a first. Ah, I said, what type of dream is this? <laughs> I said, because obviously, you know, with uni, it's it scores. You when you add up all the scores, yeah. that's what makes that's what makes the thing. Ah, I said, okay. Lo and behold, COVID happened. That whole thing with COVID happened. Obviously, you didn't know COVID was going to happen. Um, and then results, they came. When I got my results, lo and behold, I, I got a first. I finished uni. with I finished with a first-class degree. Hallelujah. But when I was looking at my individual marks for certain subjects, I'm seeing 54. I'm seeing 62. Some and, to, way. and to those at home that don't know, you know, Sorry. How, how does that relate? It, it, you know, how does 54? 54 is you have just passed. It's, it's, it's a pass. Is it pass? Is it like a C or a B or a it's 54 is a C. A C. It's 54 is a, is a solid C. 62 is like a higher C going into a B mm, sector. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Two of my exams had those results. The rest of them were 70s and stuff. But I'm like, with this 54, if I was to, you know, do the math, and add it all up together, I should have come out with a 2-1. Yeah. But for some reason, I still can't... It wasn't, it wasn't like... It wasn't a mistake. Or, yeah. I think, I think overall, all the scores added up to 69.5 or something stupid like that. And obviously, anything over 68 is a first. Is a first and yeah. that's literally how that dream came to pass. So in my head, I was like, okay, you know what? I feel like... I'm actually doing the right thing here in terms of staying in this line because mm. at every step, God was reassuring me that this is a path that I'm going to, you know, allow you to excel in. Mm. Even up until the point of finishing uni and I was deciding, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to go do a master's? Should I venture out into another field? Because Lord, it takes a lot of time. It takes yeah. a long time for you to get to the stage where you want to be. Another dream came and it was very vivid like, it was God that was directing me, telling me, okay, go and pick up that file. Yeah. That's the case that you're going to do. Go yeah. pick up that file. You're yeah. going to do that case. Go and pick yeah. up that file. I said, you can't ignore this. Even though in, in that moment, I didn't want to, I don't want to be, I didn't want to be a lawyer anymore. Yeah. I'd given up. I didn't want to be a lawyer anymore. Things like that were still coming. So I think it's very important, number one, to identify how God is speaking to you, relating the matters of your life yeah. and relating to the things that will shape you. It's very, very important to know the way that God is speaking to you. you know, for some of us, we might just have a feeling. You know, sometimes I'll have a, like an unsettled feeling about, let's even say like a relationship or like a friendship. You know, I have a very, very unsettled feeling about it. Mm. And a lot of us will ignore that unsettled feeling thinking, oh, it's just like anxiety. It's just this, it's just that. It's God's way of telling you that, that that's not a place that I'm yeah. telling you to be. So it's very key for us to be able to identify how God is speaking to us. And that will, uh, that will really, really help us in knowing if we are living in that predestined, you know, identity that he has already created for us. You know, same way he said to Jeremiah, you know, I've um, set you apart to be a prophet. Yeah. Tell me, he has set you apart to be a singer. And for you to be able to achieve the things that you've achieved as a singer, mm. you, you know that it isn't even by your own power or it isn't by your own might. So for you to be able to get to the stage, for you to confidently say, I am this, I am that, there needs to be like a lot of grilling. You need it's yeah. not it's not gonna be something that's easy. I feel like as well, I feel like um This conversation and what you said in the past and what I've said has sort of highlighted two different ways of, you know, how you can come to terms with what your identity is. Mm. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if you if 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 um you guys picked this up, but with what I said of okay, my gift is singing, it seems like with my identity in that it's helped me, you know, navigate through certain stages in life, sort of thing. Um, and another person, you know, they may, it may be the same way, like they have a gift and identity and it helps them navigate through certain stages in life. But yeah. I feel like it's, it, it contrasts to Ayo. Maybe you haven't even seen this yourself, but from the story you just explained to me, it seems like your identity is actually determining the path you're going along. Mm. So here, where I'm going with this is, I'm not sure if you picked up on when she was talking about her school days and the type yeah. of person she is, and she's very out there, she's very loud, she's yeah. very, you know, um, she's, a, she's very talkative. Yeah. These are all characteristics and personalities that you see in lawyers. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So in the same way, okay, cool, I sing, I may not necessarily be a musician. Mm. Ayo's identity 
in the way she is has actually driven the direction of her career and where yeah. she's going. So yeah. I feel like it's very important to understand that your identity, your identity can impact your life in so many different ways. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, subject, it's subjective to the individual. Um, yeah. And I feel like that will probably help in, you know, um, maybe even identifying what your identity is because you may even, like, I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh, because... I'm not seeing things as clear cut as this person is and the effects it's having on their life. Like I need to, for me to know my identity, I need to see things the same way this person is seeing it, but yeah. it's not necessarily going to be like that. Mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's going to be different for every individual. You just need to look at your own life and really like take a step back and see what is it that is making my life yeah. look like this, look like that sort of thing. How is it having an effect? And I thought, mm -hmm. I feel like by doing that, there's, there, there must be one thing that's consistent about you mm. throughout your all the days of your life that has now brought you to that decision mm. um, that you've made. I wanna, I wanna like ask a question, um, just relating to like. So Timmy has already identified that is at a stage where things, you know, from where he was at school, at secondary school, is different mm. to where he is now. He's in, he's in uni now, mm -hmm. and it's very different. And you said it's very important for you to sort of do like an evaluation yeah. and see what like a common. Um, what the common denominator is. Yeah, a common denominator is. Obviously, would you say now being at uni, do you feel like more comfortable with like who you are like as a person or who you it is that you want to be as a person? Or do you think there's still things around you that's like sort of shaping you? So let's say like the friends that you're making, um, flatmates, people that you live with, um, the city that you're at, being away from home, like how is that molding you and shaping you more? Um, in terms of your, like your identity? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, in all honesty, I feel like I'm still on that journey. Mm. Yeah. Because, like you said, the city, the city I'm in, the people I'm around, well, with, with people my age, they know that, they know that some people, some people are good for you and some people are not. Mm. But at the age that we're at, Say if like your friends say now, or they wanna you know, let's go out, let's go get food. Mm. But you know that there's a person that's gonna be there that you know you shouldn't you shouldn't be around that person mm. because there's some people that you know they're gonna bring you down. Yeah. Like if that person's there, so it all comes to you telling yourself that I've got food at home. Yeah. You know I'll eat at home. I don't yeah. really feel like going out. Yeah. yeah. So what the mistake that most of us make with people my age is just following the crowd. Yeah. going to do what everyone else is doing yeah. whereas mm -hmm. instead of you sitting down and thinking am i am i going to benefit from this or is it just going to be oh yeah i'm about to go out i'm going to go get some food with my friends yeah mm -hmm. when really and truly you know you're going to get food but then there's that one person that whenever you're with that person one thing leads to another one thing leads to another yeah oh let's get food okay from food let's go here okay from here let's go there sorry to do cut you off i'm gonna press i'm gonna press you a bit, a bit on that yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah so you'll have to uh, you'll have to forgive me for this. But, so the, the saying goes, show me your friends and I'll show, and you, I'll show you, you what kind of person you are. Yeah. Right? So do you actually pick your friends in the way you want to be reflected? Hmm. Do you actively think, because I know for a fact, I hand on heart, I've never looked at my friends and thought, I'm not going to be friends with that guy because, you know, they do this. Because if, you know, they are not they're a nice person or they I get on with them, then we're gonna be friends. There's just no way that I wouldn't be a friend to, unless they bring danger into my life. You know, if my life is at, is, is at risk, <laughs> that's a different story, you know? Yeah. I'm not out here, um, you know, waving a knife about, not, none of that, right? But if we're just, you know, if they just do one thing or two that I don't necessarily agree with, I wouldn't do those things with them, similar to what you just said. Mm -hmm. But do you go and actively choose your friends? in order to uh, show how you want to be portrayed? Uh, I'd say I do actively choose my friends because I've, like say there'll be things that have happened and I'll address it with the person. Yeah. And I'm the type of person, like once I've addressed it and I know that you know how I feel about the situation. Yeah. If if it happens again, then I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that I'm not gonna say anything, I just, I just pull away like, yeah, mm. I, I yeah, just I leave. What you and mean. then that's yeah. when people start asking, "Oh, like you don't you don't really shout me no more. You don't really yeah. you don't talk to me no more." But in my head, I'm like, I've already I've told you like certain certain things happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it's happened again. 
It's like that I I'm the type of person I don't feel like I need to explain to anybody. Mm. Mm. Once I've really said what I've said and it happens again, I'm I'm just gonna leave without explanation. Yeah. Okay. I've already told you. But when you say like do I like hand in hand pick my friends, um majority of my friends are either our class them as family or my friendship group, but they're a family themselves. Yeah. Mm. So we all we all know each other. Yeah. But whereas my uni friends, they're that's what that's what they are. They're uni yeah. friends. Uni I don't in in the long run, some of them I can see as like after uni, yeah, we can be friends, but others they they might just be a memory to me. Do you get what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think your friends shape who you are? Do you think they contribute to your identity? Yes, they do. But then you see, it depends the type of friend they are, because there's the good, there's the good friends, and then there's the friends you shouldn't be around. Okay. So the good friends, they're the ones who say, you know, when you're, say you're going, you look like you're going astray, mm-hmm. and it's the friend that kind of they pull you back, like, mm. yo, like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. They're the type of friends that I, you know, I like to keep around. That mm-hmm. you, they'll pull you back. They'll be like, yo, you know, let's go. You do support this system. Yeah. 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 Keep you yeah. Like, let's go. Discipline. Let's go do this instead. Yeah. Whereas the other friends are like, oh. Come on, man. Where you need? You live once. Do yeah. You do what you want. But I know. I know what you mean. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. what I mean by like I'm I'm still learning. Hmm. See, that's that's you know that speaks volumes to me because I, I know when I was your age, I was not thinking like that, and it's good to hear that kind of mentality. And I'm not sure where you've got that from or how it's been drilled into you, but it's good to have and for other people listening and, and watching to know that, yes, they should be choosing their friends because the p- people you do spend time on will end up rubbing off on you one way or another. Majorly. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what your views are on, on, on that. You yeah, know. No, yeah, most, no, most definitely. Like, I don't think, I for one, um, don't choose my friend, like choose my friends and look or, or look and say, ah, oh, do you, um, sorry, what was your question again? So it's essentially, do you actively go out yeah. to Pick. choose your friends yeah. Um, knowing how they could portray you. Yeah, I, I don't. The way I go around choosing my friends is just like, if we have a similar vibe, if you're mm-hmm. someone who mm-hmm. has the same, like, like similar morals to me, yeah. Um, your personality, yeah. if it's something like someone that can vibe off, that's usually how I choose my friends. And then cool. So it's just like, okay, you as a person, and all the morals you have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera like how how well does that resonate with me mm. and then when it comes to then like actions of my friends for me personally i don't know maybe um it's bad of me to do this or as long as or, or whatever but as long as your actions aren't affecting me i couldn't mm. care less yeah, okay. yeah. like but genuinely like I, I i'm not gonna cap and it's a it's, it's literally a thing of okay cool if those actions are portraying now portraying me to be some sort of way mm. um i feel like that's where, I don't know, things could get a bit techy, but for me, as long as whatever you're doing isn't affecting me and you're not bringing, and like, you know who I am, what yeah. I stand for, mm-hmm. and that's not um, bringing me off, then yeah. for me personally, it doesn't really like, have an impact on me. I feel like it maybe like you could argue that it, it, it could because it's like, why am I associating myself with people that people. don't have yeah. you know, the same yeah. Like, yeah. morals with, um, as me, etc. But then as well, I think it's like, one, no one's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, like, to find people that like that do exactly the same things that you do. Even mm-hmm. then, like the things that like I do myself, I know I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, how can I then judge you for your shortcomings, knowing that you know I have shortcomings? Yeah. I feel like it then refers to what Timmy said in the sense of, um, okay, if like how far off what our core is are you willing to go mm. yeah if yeah. i know that you're willing to go then and i know i'm not then okay yeah. cool i need to like do you know like, but i feel like you'll get to a stage where you understand that like i'm i feel like for me right now the friends i have um i feel like i'm very comfortable in it mm-hmm. yeah. and i feel like as well you have friends for different purposes of yes. your life yes yeah. and as well i feel like you also um or in saying that you have friends for different purposes of your life, there's a degree of closeness that you'll have. Mm-hmm. Like even within a friendship group, let's say you've got four or five boys, you're not going to have the exact same relationship with each we of those four or five yeah. boys. Different. Yeah. One of them you'll be extremely tight with. Yeah. The other one, it's not that because you're extremely tight different, you don't like him. It's just that's the relationship you, t- you two have. Yeah. And the other two, that's what your relationship yeah. is. Do you get what I'm saying? And I feel like the ones that you do draw in closer to you are the ones that are more like 
like more like you what you stand for yeah. that's the one that if you're drifting off you can be open with because mm-hmm. you can't be open with everyone Definitely you can't have not. that relationship with no. everyone and, yeah. up and be confessing your sins to everyone do you know what I'm saying <laughs> so that one one or two people that you have that with those are the ones that will then okay draw you back sort of thing exactly um, G check you when needed yeah and I feel like it's very important that you keep those people close. Yeah. Yes. Because if you don't, that's when you can then drift off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, get key, caught to, up it's in key to add to this as well, right? Because you said something, uh, you know, we've all kind of said it, we do have people in our lives that possibly don't have the best traits at times or, don't, or, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. have uh, positivity uh, all the time. But, you know, it's safe to say that we are still a positive impact in their lives. So for yeah, us to take exactly. ourselves away, exactly we're that. actually shortchanging that yeah. friend. Yes. You have a good relationship yes. with them. You have a good opportunity to add to their life. I, I think, Ayo, you were going to say something, but I just, thought I should add that on because mm-hmm. it's a it's a very good point uh but what you know what are your thoughts you got you know you've got plenty of friends <laughs> Stop yeah? it. Sorry. So from, from yeah, there to all around you what yeah? <laughs> even just literally on your point like it's funny you said that because I literally have a friend who has told me you're he, he's literally told me you're one of the only people I can introduce to my mom yeah. as my friend yeah because Oh, I, I don't know, maybe the traits and characteristics I have. And I know his, and I tell him all the time, I don't like your friends. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. he does the activities of his friends, but I know him for like who he is. And yeah. I always try to look past, because if it was for the activities, if I was to judge him on that, me and him won't be friends. Because mm. so, the things yeah. he does, I don't do. Yeah. Yeah. But I know who he is deep down. And yeah. that's why we still have a relationship. But it's like, it's, it's very strange to see that it's like, or that saying, show me your friends and I'll tell you who yeah. you are. It's funny how he would say to me, okay, you'll be the one that I'll show my mom exactly. because do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah. okay, cool. Even if I don't agree with the actions you're doing, to know that I'm the guy that can bring you back to reality, yeah. that's mm-hmm. why I will remain your friend. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because the love I have for you, I, as like, as my boy, I don't want you going down whatever path you could potentially yeah. go down. Yeah. So I feel like it's also very important to remember you can play that role for some people in some of your friends' lives. And that's yeah. a statement yeah. that we want for Celeste and Youth, right? Yeah, that could, you know, that kind of story is what we want, where we are the model, a positive model for, for our friends yeah. within our friendship groups. Definitely. Um, yeah, and, and so that's important. Go, go on, I think. Yeah, no, I was going to say, the whole issue of like, like friends, I think um, some people see it as black and white. Some people see it as show me your friend and I'll show you who you are. And some people, like we've all identified here, it's not as black and white as that. We all may have friends who, on the outside, the way the outside world will perceive them, you know, will be in a negative light. But the way we perceive them, because we know them aside from a certain activity mm-hmm. that they're doing or aside from a, per- a certain personality trait that they might have, we know that deep down that they're a good person. And what I said, you know, you removing yourself from that situation or removing yourself from that person's life, are you depriving them of like an opportunity, you know, to be better? Yes, Okwe says, I have loads of friends. I, I do have a lot of friends. I have different pockets of friends. You know, I have friends, church friends, school friends, um, work friends, like different pockets of friends. But one thing I've realized is I'm not a sponge. You know, a per- like when I say a sponge, I'm not a person who absorbs um, everything that's around me. I don't let it affect me as like an individual. So, you know, once you start, everybody has like a negative thing that they do. But if you put yourself in a vulnerable position where you are easily influenced, easily impacted mm-hmm. by what other people do, then you do become a sponge and yeah. you start reflecting, you know, the, those yeah, traits. traits and characteristics. So it's very important for you to be grounded and rooted. You can have yeah. all the friends in the world. You can. But as long as you remain rooted and grounded in who you are, there isn't any way that the negative things that those people will will, will do that will influence you. Like I had a friend, sorry, I'm just gonna do do like a, a quick example at yeah. uni where I felt like I wasn't as grounded and rooted as I am now. Um that friend was a very negative person. That that person wasn't a person who would see the positive things in other people. And I started like internalizing and I started becoming that type of like negative Nancy. Mm. Yeah. There wasn't a positive thing that you would do. You know, things won't in like in Yoruba they would say like could like like there isn't anything that you would do that would you know ginger me in any way and that was literally because of this particular Mm -hmm. person Mm -hmm. and i was always around this person 24 7 you know to the point that i didn't realize that 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 trait in them was already starting to reflect Mm -hmm. in me as a person and from the moment that i realized wait I don't want to be this type of person. I don't want to view everybody, mm-hmm. you know, in a negative light. I don't want to view everybody as, you know, bad or have like distrust for people. Mm. I decided that, okay, I'm going to take a few steps away from that person. Yeah. Not that I'm going to completely cut them off, 
but I'm going get to take a few. Zone. Yeah, get into it. So, so I don't. So people too no, won't now start looking at me as, yeah. oh, roof, negative Nancy. Don't mind that one. So I want to I want to pick something on on that before we get into our last uh, question. So how do you how did you get to the point where you now feel rooted? Because not a lot of people mm-hmm. are in that position. I know for a long yeah. time I wasn't in that position, and I found it difficult to find um, the foundation, especially. You know, growing up, I, I didn't have my dad around with, you know, most people that are immigrant, your dad is in Nigeria, <laughs> this place. So you need someone to have built that foundation for you where you can almost have something to fall back on when yes. you're unsure about everything else. Yes. Because so, you can always throw some things away and say, actually, I don't want to do, like some friends, you can say, actually, I don't want to spend time with these people. I don't want to be influenced by this. Mm-hmm. But then you have something to fall back on. But then at some point, you need to find that routine and hopefully the sooner, the better, right? So mm-hmm. how do you find that routine? That routine, it, yeah. like I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes you have a feeling. Mm. Sometimes you have a feeling about a particular person yeah. or about a particular situation. And it's being able to trust, sometimes trust your gut, gut instincts. Mm-hmm. It's very important to, like, just be able to trust your gut instinct. Yeah. My fallback back when I was in uni was my mum. Okay. I became more closer to my mum while I was at uni yeah. than I was when I was at home. I you like we'll be on the phone, we'll be FaceTiming my mom and my auntie. And they sort of like drew me back a little bit because it, it was home. Do you know what I mean? Regardless of how far you go, you know, the home is always waiting for you. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And me being able to like have me being able to relate to my mom and share half of the things that, you know, that I'm going through at uni with my mom, she was sort of like a voice of reminder, like, mm, I about me. Like yeah. don't don't go too far away mm-hmm. from you know don't deviate too far away. Of course you're there to experience new things, mm-hmm. but re- always remember you know where you're from. And I was very lucky to have gone to uni with my best friend who I've been best friends with since when I was in primary school. Like that one friend we've been friends in primary school. We go to th- we've been to the same school every yeah. education institution. And she luckily for me she was there. So there was always a reminder of home. You know, because when you go to another city, there's sort of like, there's th- there's that tendency for you to forget who you are, yeah. live because you're, you're living like a brand new life. Yeah, but if you've got someone there or something there that That's keeps you rooted, you, back, yeah. you know, that will draw you back if you're going to go too far away. Mm-hmm. It's very very important to, yeah. to have that around you. At least it keeps you, you know, within. Yeah, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it keeps you. I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think. In addition to that as well, yeah, I think one thing, um, and even I feel like I can apply this to myself, in that it's not always going to be support systems that you have that will get you through um, times where like you're feeling like you're un, like you're not rooted. Yeah. yeah, I feel like one thing for me now, why I've become a lot more confident in the type of person. I am over the past couple of years is because I've actually made mistakes mm-hmm. and I've actually suffered the consequences of those mistakes. Right. And I've realized the effect those mistakes have had on my life. Mm. And you sit down and deep that, do I actually want my life to look like this? Mm-hmm. Do you, and this, I've, and when you feel that regret of you actually letting yourself down, mm. that that's what will keep your, that, that's hundred percent what will keep you rooted because in that moment, you will know who you are, what you stand for, and you will know that you won't want to feel like this again. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's very important as well to put that message out there for a lot of young people because it's all good in saying, oh yeah, remember this, remember that. But I, when you're young, it can be a lot. It can be hard. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Obviously, the reason why we say remember this, remember that is because some mistakes are so costly that you can't make yeah. up for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's to avoid you making those mistakes. Yeah. But mistakes are in- inevitable. The same advice we get from our parents saying, do this, do that. They made mistakes too. They just mm-hmm. don't show it to us because mm-hmm. yeah. all of them were top of the class. All of them were. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> they're all. They're all perfect. But in 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 reality, they they made mistakes yeah, too. Maybe they, they just won't glorify it to us so that we don't think it's the right thing mm-hmm. and yeah. go and do the same things. Yeah. You get yeah. what I'm saying? But once you do make those mistakes and you can actually learn from it, like for me, I know 100 percent. This is definitely what's keeping me. Um, grounded and rooted and I think another thing to add to that is if you're someone who's struggling with identity mm. knowing that you're the type of person that in situations where people wither from side to side you can stay rooted yeah that's your like, that's your base that's yeah. your starting point 100% like that's what you will use to get an understanding into the type of person you are because yeah. like we said identity is a whole range of things yes. yeah Do you know what I'm saying it's what you stand for it's um um it's uh what makes you you sort yeah. of thing Do you know what I'm saying so knowing at least this part of my identity, I'm firm in it. Um, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, 100%. Like, maybe, if, I don't know if I can use an example and why we're here. I know 
one thing, and all of us, I think we can relate to this. One thing about our identity is um, uh, is that we are all Celestians. Celestians. Yeah, we all go to the celestial church of Christ. This yeah. is part of our identity. Yeah, I knew this for a fact because when I was applying to universities, I was only applying to, or I only wanted to go to a city where there was a celestial church of Christ because yeah. I knew I, yeah. I just didn't really want to branch out because yeah. I knew this was part of this was a very big part of what made me me. Mm. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So knowing that, um, I feel like. It's it's it then ties back in with Ayo's point of always like, f like find roots or find connections when yeah. you're growing up through life to keep you tied to your base. Yeah. Mm. Um. Because when you do, when you fall off it and make those mistakes, you at least you then know where to return to. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. know that your base is home and your base is is the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Because you may not realize everything you're doing in church, everything you're doing as you're growing up is the right thing until you step outside of it and then realize mm -hmm. what it was protecting you from. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. all of a sudden then you go back to it and you know, okay, this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah. you can either learn it the software, you can learn it the yeah, hardware. Yeah, I so. definitely felt uh, more at home since returning back so to church. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. felt lost for, for many years and it's helped me feel more grounded. Go yeah. on, Ayo. No, I was just going to say, because we're now going into like something that we're going to explore, you know, a bit further um, yeah. in our next episode. So I don't want us to, you know, dive too much in what? into that. But it is, what you said is, is, is so important and yeah. it's something that we will need to talk about separately, you know, yeah. as a whole. And, ju and just emphasize something that, uh, you know, I know we need to round up, uh, but just to emphasize something that you said, um, in, in terms of our parents as well, if the oh, moms and dads are sorry, listening, not sharing their mistakes yes. yeah. it's so important so we've told plenty of stories from our own opinion opinions and experiences and the anecdotal stories does matter storytelling matters it's it the matters. reason why mm -hmm. we read books because you get to learn and actually mm -hmm. we can learn from their mistakes and make less of it mm -hmm. if they share those mistakes yeah. yes. with us i think that, that like you said they re they think I, you know, I'm guessing this. They think that sharing their mistakes will open it up as, ah, they did it, so I can do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. sometimes emphasizing and telling a good story of, I did this, mm -hmm. I realized it's wrong, you don't have to I do this and yeah. learn from my mistake yeah. actually gives us a reason because we're invested in them yes. and we then live our life knowing, I don't need to make that because my yeah. mom did or my exactly. dad did. Do, do you get what I mean? Exactly. They just tell us the good story. I got it. It I got first and you're like right yeah. I get that I want to get A and first but then there's <laughs> bare mistakes yeah. that you've not told me about that mm -hmm. now I'm still going to make and I feel like as well this is a completely different topic and I don't want to delve into <laughs> this yeah. but when you break it down into its fundamentals yeah storytelling from your parents is so crucial because yeah. you will realise that the story of your life is actually similar to theirs. Shots fired. Yo. You Shots get what I'm fired. saying? Shots like fired. the tell story, them. I'm telling you. like I'm telling this you. is like generational things that like, yeah. are happening yeah. and it's like oh wow like okay um, me knowing how, like knowing that the story behind everything they've gone through, and seeing similarities within mm. myself, I can now see what they, the steps they took to get to where they are. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know then how to apply it yourself. Exactly. Like there'd, there'd be nothing worse than a, a mother or a parent and a child being in the same home, and the child's going through everything the ex the parent went through and I'm having no clue. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's all part of our identity. Yeah, like, we. Is as much as we like my mom always says this thing you sing because i gave you my voice mm. and i tell her no you didn't but really and truly yeah, it could have been from yeah. heaven above that yeah. singing <laughs> runs through my mom's blood yeah. and I'm, I'm me and my sisters were our mom's children that's where we got it from do yeah. you know what i'm saying so as much as we don't maybe like to admit it like we do genuinely take traits from our parents that like, we think we're our own person but we're we were born from them for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about friends influencing us. Yeah. There's no one that influences us more, more, than, our more than our parents. In yeah. our identities, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's very important to, I think, take that into consideration as well. Right, yeah. okay. So, um, I, have you got anything to, to add to that before I close To add off? to the parent thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I do, I do 100% will, I will agree um, that your parents do shape you in you know in more than a way that you should and i think i don't want to say this is like an advice to parents but it is sort of like an advice to parents if you're not going to take anything away from what we've said today take one thing away share your mistakes with your kids please do. it's very very important for you to share your mistakes with your kids and be as open as possible with your children there's no point in sugarcoating your life because mm -hmm. we all know that life isn't perfect mm -hmm. i think in sugarcoating our lives we sort of built that expectation in children that it's, it's a false identity yeah you build it this mind mindset in your children that oh my mom was this so i have to be this but 
let them know when you were the black sheep of the family. Also, scared let to them make, know when you were a disappointment. Scared to make mistakes because you think mistakes yeah. is not normal. Yeah, the mistakes that's is exactly so normal. what I was learning from. Exactly Share what I said. It. So yeah, Share saying so, make the mistake, learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let them let them learn from it. So at least then they can they, they've got a fallback. Even if they're going through that particular thing in that moment, at least they can pick up the phone or call you. Say, oh, mommy, you know, you told me not to do this, yeah. but actually I've done it. Yeah. So what can I do? Like, how can I make this better? Yeah. It's creating that line of communication between like child and parent it's very very important definitely so okay this uh, brings me to our closing question keeping it as brief as possible what advice would you give to your younger self on developing their identity so if you could speak to your younger self keeping it as brief as one sentence if two mm -hmm. max um what advice would you give tell me you start. stay strong in who you are and what you believe in very nice timmy <laughs> <laughs> He's got too much. <laughs> you get, this is what I prepared later. <laughs> if I could speak to my younger self, um, I'd say stay true to who you are. Yeah, stay true to who you are. Yeah. Ayo? Yeah, don't change for anybody. Don't change for anybody. Don't change for anybody. Uh, this might sound cliche, Go but on. I think follow the word of the Bible as though it's speaking to you directly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and th the reason why I say that, just to expand on it, when I came back to church, I realized that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But I want to be a leader of men. I want to be, um, uh, uh, you know, that model that God has put on earth to yeah. show his work, his miracles, and, mm -hmm. his, and who he is. Yeah. So that's what it means to me. So yeah, thank you very much uh, to our guests. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. We are, uh, welcome feedback and your thoughts on the topics of discussion. Uh, thanks for myself, Ayo, the entire cast, thank the production you. team. Goodbye and God, God bless. God bless, thank you.